Hello, this is Mr. Coates, and welcome to APES uh, Environmental Science Lecture Number Six. This is Energy and Ecosystems. One of the things about ecosystems we have to realize is that uh, energy flows through them in one direction. So ultimately, for all ecosystems, the energy comes from the sun. And then as plants take that energy, they turn it into a chemical form of energy to which animals then can consume and use for their energy. And during all these times, we lose some energy. And so energy transfer is not very efficient when it comes to ecosystems. So we're going to look at how energy transfer through ecosystems and what are some of the uh, problems with energy transfer in ecosystems. All right, so the first thing we have to know is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the main way that ecosystems get their energy from uh, the sun. And so we have an ecosystem down here. We have all, all kinds of plants down on this beach scene here. And all these plants perform uh, uh, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process which light energy, right here, light energy, is used to convert our water and carbon dioxide into usable energy for the plant, also known as sugars or glucose. And then the waste product is oxygen. And so this is the main way that energy gets into an ecosystem or a biome is through photosynthesis. Now, some of the major cycles that are involved here are the carbon cycle uh, and the oxygen cycle and also the water cycle are all involved in this process. And so we have to know about those cycles in order to know about particular chemical equation as well. Now, the other half of getting energy to the ecosystem is through a process called cellular respiration. Once the plants make those sugars, which is this sugar right here, glucose, okay, then animals can then take this glucose and then combine it with oxygen in their bodies, and that produces carbon dioxide, water, and then energy in the form of a molecule called ATP. Hopefully you remember what that molecule is all about from biology. But remember, this is the molecule that allows your cells to do work. Okay, that molecule is very important. So this is the chemical equation that gets the energy from the glucose that the plants produced from the sun, and then they turn it into their energy to do their work. So this is very important as, as well in the process of things. Once again, those same cycles, the carbon cycle, the oxygen cycle, and the water cycle are all involved in uh, this process. And so they're all intertwined. Now, when energy enters an ecosystem, it enters here at the lowest level. And we call these producers. And the way we can symbolize how energy flows through an ecosystem is by showing what we call a food chain. A food chain is a very simplistic one-way path of energy as it flows through an ecosystem. So we have the energy that starts at the producers here and goes up to a primary consumer that eats them, and then another consumer that eats those and another consumer that eats that. And then finally, we have the top level consumer, in this case, an osprey that eats this fish here. So this is a food chain. Remember, the arrows show direction of energy, and that's important. Arrows go the correct way. A lot of people get this confused and they uh, put the arrows the backwards way. Now, so that's a food chain, very simplistic, and usually food chains aren't very big. You see here that they've only got about five uh, levels here. And that's because by the time we get up to this level, there's hardly any energy left in this ecos in this food chain. And so you cannot have that many levels at all because there's not that much energy left. Now let's look at what we call, would call a food web. If we were to incorporate this food chain into a food web, a food web becomes much more uh, complex. So this is a food web. And remember, our original food chain is right here. But a food web shows all of the feeding interactions between all the organisms in uh, this ecosystem. So down here, once again, we have the producers at this level. We have the primary consumers here. And then we have tertiary consumers, quaternary consumers, and ultimately the top level predators at the top here. Once again, arrows signify the direction of energy. And uh, so energy can flow all these different ways. So you can read this as this crab eats this mangrove and also eats these zooplankton. And then this crab is eaten by this mangrove snake and also by this bird here as well as by this fish here. So that's how you read a food web. And in fact, there are multiple food chains put together. Okay, so I've been mentioning words like producers, 
consumers, and so forth. And what those refer to is trophic levels. Trophic level is nothing more than a feeding level in the ecosystem. A majority of the energy is down here in our primary producers. And so this uh, number refers to kilocalories. And so that's the, the unit we're going to use to signify energy in our ecosystem is kilocalories. And so as we move up each trophic level, the amount of energy decreases. And there's a rule about that, and it's called the rule of 10. And if you don't remember this from uh, biology, then uh, you should uh, definitely look this up. But basically it says that uh, ecosystems are very in inefficient when it comes to energy transfer. Only 10% of the energy in this level gets moved up to this level. And then only 10% of that will be used by this level. Now where does the remaining 90% go from each level? What happens is that most of that energy loss is right here as heat. And let me get a different color here. Black. Okay, so much most of this energy loss is right here as heat. So 90%, 90% of the energy that was locked up down here in the producers is lost as heat to the ecosystem, never to be gained again by that ecosystem. So uh, energy efficiency is very uh, poor in ecosystems. And if you look here, when we get up to here, out of our original 10,000 kilocalories, the top level consumers only have 10 kilocalories left. So that's very inefficient. And this is one reason why you have very few organisms up here at the top trophic levels. Most of our organisms are way down here as primary producers. So this is why you see way more zebra than lion. This is why you see way more uh, uh, fish than uh, sharks and so forth. And that's because of all of this energy transfer is very inefficient. Decomposers also take some of that when they start decomposing some of the organisms. But once again, we still lose a lot as heat. This applies to the second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics says that every time energy is transferred between uh, different uh, types, like going for, for example, uh, from kinetic to potential energy, a little bit of the usable energy or the high quality energy is lost into the system. Ecosystems are no different than any other system. The energy is lost in here as heat. This gets us into the concept of uh, ecological pyramids. There are usually three main types of pyramids when we talk about. It. The first one is pyramid of energy. So basically it shows you how energy decreases as we move up those trophic levels. And then it, once again it shows the energy lost as heat to those. And so once again this follows the rule of 10. So we start with 100% of the energy down here. The next group only gets 10%. The next group only gets 1%. And at the top is a tenth of a percent. So this is a pyramid of energy. We can also apply the same kind of thinking to the amount of biomass. Now biomass is a measurement of the living material in an ecosystem. And if we look at the biomass in an ecosystem and we divide it up into trophic levels, once again, most of the biomass in an ecosystem is going to be at this lower primary productivity, this primary producer level. Most of the energy is going to be at this primary producer level here. Uh, the second most then is going to be at the primary consumer level. And the least is going to be at this third or fourth level at the very top. So this is a pyramid of biomass. It shows the amount of biomass as we move up the trophic pyramid. The last pyramid is pyramid of numbers. Once again, same kind of concept applies, only this time we're using it to show the amount of organisms at those levels. So you can actually see the numbers uh, decrease, uh, the number of organisms as we go up the up pyramid here. So this is all because of uh, that rule of 10 and uh, that second law of thermodynamics. One of the main ways to measure energy in an ecosystem is through primary productivity. Primary productivity is a measurement of the rate of the amount of energy that the producers get from the sun and convert it into biomass. Now, another term is net primary productivity. So what we mean by net, this is the amount that is actually used by the rest of the ecosystem. Minus that which is uh, used by the uh, plants uh, to do their normal uh, 
energy requirements such as building new structures like leaves or producing flowers or producing seeds. So that energy is used by the plant, but anything left over then can be used by the rest of the ecosystem, and that is net primary productivity. Now, what you can do is that you can figure out how much net primary productivity is available to your ecosystem is that you take the gross primary productivity, that's the total amount of energy uh, harvested by the plants from the sun, and subtract the amount of energy used in respiration. And we measure that in grams of carbon per meter square per day. So therefore, it's a rate okay, because of that. Now, if we look at different types of ecosystems over here, the one that has the highest average net primary productivity is the open ocean. And that's just because it's so big. If we were to take a acre of open ocean along with an acre of a tropical rainforest, then the open ocean would not able be able to compete at all as far as net primary productivity goes. But the fact is that the, open, the oceans are such a big place that if you combine all of their primary productivity, then they have the greatest amount. After oceans then, of course, it goes to those warm climates where we have lots of water, so we have lots of biomass. So the tropical rainforest, temperate forest uh, are the next ones. And then as we get down, we get drier and we have less plants and so obviously our deserts here are going to have very low primary productivity uh, and then we start getting into things like lakes and streams and then one of the aquatic ones here is an estuary we live on one of the biggest estuaries in, in the united states and estuaries actually have a fairly high primary productivity when it comes to aquatic ecosystems if we look at charts that compare the percentage of the earth's surface area so once again the oceans are so big here uh, and then the average net primary production, and then also the percentage of the Earth's net primary production. Once again, we see that the oceans have the highest net here. Um, however, if we look at the amount per meter squared, once again, it's very small here compared to that of, say, uh, the reefs or even the tropical rainforest here. And uh, so the open ocean actually is very poor uh, as far as energy goes, but it's just so big it makes up for it. Well, I hope that information is helpful for you in order to uh, determine how energy uh, moves from one organism to the next in an ecosystem.